What's up everybody, it's Jake Gordon again, welcome to another video. I'm going to get, literally give you guys the exact Google dropping strategy for Shopify dropshipping 2020, the exact strategy I'm using for my, you know, 100k store if you're following along, um, link above. But yeah dudes, literally the exact strategy I'm using, if you want to start Google shopping for, you know, 2020 and e-commerce dropshipping, this is the exact video you want to be looking at because step by step exactly what I'm doing right now and how you can, you know, get 20, 30, 40, 100k in sales um, per month. So yeah, I'm going to give you guys a general store example, but this will work for a niche store. It even works for one product store. And um, bar obviously, you know, the, the second phase here, testing 20 to 30 different products. But this literally will work for any sort of um, Shopify store. You know, it doesn't even matter what Shopify, it could be WooCommerce, whatever. This will work for anything. So, you know, the testing phase, you know, if you're doing a general store, make sure you have 20, 30 different products and um, not including variants for the testing campaign. So, you know, if you're just testing one to five products and you're brand new, probably not going to find a winner. So you really need to give yourself 20 to 30. Don't go all out and go for 100 to 100 because then you're, you know, you're wasting a lot of ad spend right off the bat and you don't want to do that. So 20 to 30 um, is usually my, you know, go to if I'm starting a new store for a general store. So that's what you want to go for right off the bat. Um, second kind of phase on that kind of point is, you know, always go for max cl max clicks, maximize CPC, um, just for fast testing. Now you can use manual, it does work, um, but you know, I prefer that to save that later on because manual works better when you have a lot of conversions. Um, and maximize clicks is, you know, just for fast and getting it going um, as soon as possible because I'm sure you guys are you know, impatient as me when I start a new store. You want sales like tomorrow. You don't want to have to wait, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks to know if you've got a good store. Um, so yeah, do, do maximize clicks in my opinion, always works best, I've always done it and I will always do it until you know Google come up with a better way. But yeah, maximize clicks right for that. Um, always put your CPC bid, <laughs> always put that max CPC, that's what I mean, so you'll see a little box. Always check that box or you will literally get destroyed and you'll cry. Um, if you don't check that box, Google will start giving you like two, three dollar bids and if you're doing margins of like 20 to 40 pound or whatever, um, even higher, you're not going to be profitable at like two, three, four, even five bids I've seen because you know if you get 100 clicks, do the maths, right? So you always want to go for something. If you're in the UK, I recommend starting at 0.24. Sometimes I go up to 0 0.28. It doesn't really matter. Just, you know, start somewhere around there. USA times that by 1.25. It's going to give you about 0 0.30, sometimes 0 0.35, 0 0.40 maximize. You can always increase this. My opinion is always start lower and then, you know, go up. Don't start at like, you know, one, two dollar bids that a lot of people recommend and then you're having to force it back. Always start lower, get the data, and if you have to go up and if you're not seeing data fast enough, you know, put up the CPC and um, do that later on. So yeah, do that. Um, budget's gonna be about 10 to 20 pounds. This isn't like Facebook, so when you start a new campaign, you're probably gonna spend, what, maybe like one click the next day. You might not even get clicks for the first three days. So it's not like you're spending 10, 20 pounds every day um, that, because you only get, you know, you only pay per click. So if you're not getting clicks, you're not, you know, you're not spending any money. So it's not like Facebook where you're, you know, paying for impressions as well as clicks. So, you know, start 10, 20, um, you might eventually spend it, you know, in maybe two weeks, but you're definitely not gonna spend the full budget, you know, if within, you know, the first five days, not a chance. Uh, medium priority, I always go medium priority. And that's all you need to do, just let it run. Do not touch it. Don't even look at it for the first three days. So just turn it off. <laughs> I know you guys will wanna look at it. You know, I'm the same when I start a new store, I'm looking at it within that night. Honestly, close down the laptop, shut down the Mac. Don't, don't look at it for three days. Um, after three days, it's a good sign. So your daily impressions, you know, three to five days, you should start seeing them go up. So that red line, it's usually if you've got it filtered by the red, you know, impressions should start to go up. Now it doesn't, you know, we're not gonna talk about exactly what it should be, but you know, they should, you know, start to go up. So that's the first kind of step and that's a good sign. So if your impressions are going up and um, you don't want them stagnant and it can happen in the first week, so give it time, but you know, they should, you know, spike up. Um, because clicks, you know, impressions equals clicks, clicks, um, will hopefully equal sales if your page resonates. So whatever you're using Shopify WooCommerce, um, if your landing page looks good, you know, those clicks and impressions are going to equal sales, obviously. So, you know, if, another kind of main, main thing is people don't do is they leave products too long, especially with Facebook. I know you guys do this all the time. Um, you know, if a product spends past a margin, so if you're sourcing it for £10 off AliExpress, let's say, you know, you're, mar you're selling it for 30, so you've got £20 to spread. I always give this example, it's easiest to do. You know, if that product spends £20 in that test, cut it, you know, exclude the product from the campaign, it needs to go. Um, grab the ID, product groups, and turn it off, super, super simple. Because what a lot of people do, they'll spend 30, 40 pound in this and they'll still won't get any sales. All that budget could go to the good products that you guys have and not wasted on crap. So always, always, always make sure you're excluding when they hit the margin. That's my, you know, rule of thumb, I call it the Grim Reaper effect. When it spends that margin, 
you know, is it going? Um, and you're going to get products that fail. You know, even my new store, I'm getting a lot, I get, you know, not a lot of products that fail, but I've probably cut like 10, 10 different products so far. So, you know, products, products fail, it is what it is. Um, SPC, so this is kind of phase two. You know, products that bring in three profitable sales from that test campaign, we want to move these in an SPC. SPC just means single product campaign. Um, and I like to use the duping strategy. Um, it's a lot hard to explain, but it's super simple. All you do is copy the, the general test campaign, so copy, and then you paste it. Um, and then you, what you do is you grab the item ID, you paste that in there, but instead of excluding that product, you're going to exclude everything else in the all products test. And that's just going to leave that product. In my opinion, it works a little bit better than starting a new SPC. Um, it just, you know, some people say it keeps the data. I don't really think it keeps the data um, because it is a new campaign at the end of the day, but I just feel like, you know, starts getting the momentum faster. So I just use the duping, duping strategy. You can still do a new single product campaign. It doesn't really matter. And I just always do the duping, you know, campaign that works best for me. Put the SPC up by ones, uh, one penny. So if you're bidding 0.24, put it to 0.25 just to give it some momentum because we've already established that, you know, as a winning product. Um, after three more sales in that single product campaign, so in the single product campaign, it's already had three sales, but after three more, what we're going to do is we're going to change that bid for maximize CPC that you should already have been using. And then we're going to go for manual enhanced. Make sure the little hand enhance box is ticked. All that means it's going to find conversions much faster, usually much cheaper. The bid might go up because when you tick that box, it's, you know, if you're, let's just say you've got a, um, a 0.30 bid, it is allowed to, you know, bid up to 30% more. So I think that'll be an extra 10 cents. So your bid could go up to 0.40 on some clicks, but it's only going to do that if Google thinks it can bring in a sale. So I don't mind if it's been an extra, you know, 30%. Um, as long as it's bringing me in a sale. So I always turn it on. It's much better than max my CPC at this point because we've already established it's a winning product. Now we want to find the customer. So, you know, at this stage as well, you're going to be excluding negative keywords. A lot of people are trying to exclude negative keywords on the general test campaign, but if you've got 20 to 30 products, it gets hectic as hell in there. There's a lot of search terms. It's really impossible to do. So save that for the winning products. All you're going to do is go into search terms and you're going to, you know, get rid of irrelevant stuff. So stuff that's just completely random. Um, and you do get that a lot. Trust me, people are people. They type in some dumb, dumb stuff. Um, and also stuff that doesn't really intent by an intention. So like questions, um, I always exclude like questions. Even other brands, sometimes sometimes brands do give you sale. Um, but, you know, I usually get rid of eBay, Amazon. You know, if you're in the USA, Walmart, UK, you get a lot of Argos and all that kind of stuff. I get rid of them and stuff that just doesn't really relate to the relate to the product. But the good thing about this is you're going to see how much each keyword is spending at this point. So you can really make a good educated guess. And you can also see what keywords are giving you the sales. So sometimes there will be some random stuff giving you sales at really cheap um, cost per conversion. So in that case, I would leave them on. I always do. Um, usually I don't start spending a lot because they're random. But you know, I leave that stuff on because technically that has brought me in a sale. All you really want to do at this stage is get rid of just complete, complete crap that's just not relevant to that product. So that's phase two in the SPC. Now the scaling phase, the kind of last phase we want to go over. Now there is other stages as well. You can take the stuff to Bing, which I sometimes do. Um, also you can do, you know, um, SCAG, single keyword ad groups or search. So we're not going to talk about this in this video. We just want to talk about the shopping. But, you know, after the scaling phase, you want to go to stuff like SCAGs and all that kind of good stuff because that's really where you can start, you know, turning 2K days into like 10K days. But, you know, we're just sticking on shopping. Um, but, you know, at this phase, you should have 50 sales minimum. So what a lot of people do is they'll turn this on after, well, they'll try and turn it on. You really can't turn it on, but they'll just turn this on after 10, 20 sales. You need to give it 50 sales minimum. And that's within a month, by the way. If it's had 50 sales in a year, it's not, you know, it's consistent, um, and, but it's never going to be a winning, winning product that we were talking about one, two K days. Um, it's probably just bringing you in a couple of sales a week. So, you know, 50 sales minimum within the month. Okay, just remember that because it really doesn't work um, and you're not going to see the full potential if you're turning this on with limited sales. So change the bid in, you're on manual CBC at this point, enhance, which you should be. Now you're going to go into the, the kind of fun part. You're going to turn on target rollouts. Now Google will usually give you a percentage. Um, sometimes this doesn't really work because, you know, just previously on my 100K store, I got a percentage of like 700%. Now I turned that on, but what Google started to do is, you know, if it doesn't think it can get 700%, because 700% is really high, that's one pound in, seven pound out, super, super high. Um, you know, if Google doesn't think it can actually get that, it will just, you know, if you're getting an average CPC of 30 pence, it's going to bid like stupid, stupid low numbers because it's almost scared to bid. Um, so what I recommend doing is looking at your past one to two weeks and seeing what your actual ROAS is. So if you're getting a ROAS of maybe three, three to 4% or 300 to 400%, I should say, so one pound in, three pound out, 
drop your ROAS to 300% because you're still profitable at 300% or you should be. Um, so start at 300% and then you can start going up slowly, slowly, slowly. Once your get Google's giving you that 350, 375, you know, 400. Because if you just stick it on automatically, if it gives you like something really, really stupid at 700%, it can almost kill that campaign. And in my experience, you do not want to kill this campaign. So, you know, do a 300% if you're actually getting that. But look at your data. You should be able to look at your data at this point. You're going to see a bunch of conversions. You're going to see exactly what your ROAS is and um, looking at your conversion value. So you're going to be able to know exactly what you should actually be achieving. So if it's 300%, that equals one pound in, three pound out, you know, I'll quite happily take that every single day of the week because um, I'm profitable all day at that. All you're going to do at this stage is scale, scale, scale and repeat it with other products. So remember, you're still going to be killing products and the all products test and you should have other products coming into the, the, um, the SPC, the single product campaigns. And all you're trying to do is each SPC out of those 20 to 30 products that you chose, you're trying to get them all to this kind of final stage um, scaling phase. And that's really how you can hit six figures super easy just by doing shopping, you know, not even bringing in search, not even bringing in Facebook DPA, you know, email marketing you can do as well. It's good to do, but you know, just by using Google shopping and that's the basic kind of way or even advanced way because you know this is really all you can do so once you get to this stage happy days but obviously you want to find other products because it's very easy for this product to die or somebody to just take you out just by you know making their ads better or just by making their landing page better so you always want to keep evolving and try and find in you know one to five products because you know, one product is nowhere good as five of these products because you're five times in the revenue and if one goes down one ship goes down who cares you got another four and you can always find another one so you know that's my very 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 basic explanation of Google Shopping strategy for 2020 in Shopify dropshipping and um, super easy to do. This is the only way I recommend. This is the only way I've done it for years. Um, if you're trying to do Google Shopping um, for your e-com store, copy this exact formula, make sure the, the products have to be good remember. So you can't scale a crap product. If it's a crap product, you know, that's kind of your fault. So you need to make sure the products are actually decent. Um, but yeah, super easy to do. Get this, get this done guys and I'll see you next video.